Did you know that the high level certified admin exam only has a pass rate of about 15%? So that means that when you finally do pass it and get that admin seal of approval, it carries a lot of weight and affects what you can charge as a service provider or a freelancer. This video is gonna show you why it's worth it to become an admin, why most people fail the test, and then show you a free tool that I built for you at the end that's gonna help you pass on your first try, so stick around. So first off, what is the high level certified exam and why should you care about it? Now, high level created the certified admin exam in late 2023 and designed as a way to really put a official seal of approval on their high level users who are offering services to other agencies. You see, as high level has grown, so has their community of service providers and people that don't necessarily sell high level, but they actually provide work and professional services for other agencies. Now there was a problem and there still kind of is, but there's a lot of people who claim to be a high level expert, but then when you go ahead and you pay them the money, you then find out that they really don't know what they're doing. So what High Level decided to do is they decided to create their certified admin program where they can vet their own users. And then if they see and determine that those users know what they're doing and they are indeed professionals, they give them a certified admin badge seal of approval. And then that approval makes it less scary for agencies to hire the service providers. Think of a high level certified admin in the same way that you would look at a certified Salesforce administrator. In that scenario, Salesforce has already vetted that user and they've said, yes, this person does know the platform and the high level certified admin program, it works in basically the same fashion. It costs $97 a month to maintain that certification because they're always adding to the certification. They're always adding to new badges that you can accrue. They're kind of like Pokemon and you're gonna to try to catch them all once you get certified. Now, once you've proven to high level that you know what you're talking about and they give you that badge, you can now up your hourly rate and up your project rates for the services that you provide. For instance, for me, I now get $100 an hour for high level service work. And I also do projects in the neighborhood of $5,000 if it's a project build like a sales funnel or setting up an account or designing a snapshot. My prices are usually in the $5,000 ish range. And what I've done for you is I've put together a totally free program called the High Level Service Pro Roadmap. It's linked down below in the description of this video. And it's gonna show you every single thing that I've done and currently do to attract and land these $5,000 clients and how I get these $100 an hour service jobs. So if you're down there, if you wanna make money as a high level service provider, go check out the link in the description. So to understand why people fail, let's first understand how the test works. We've got your first part, which is part A. This is your written exam. If I remember right, it's been about a year since I took my exam here. I wanna say this was about 100 multiple choice questions and it really wasn't that hard to pass. Reason being is that they give you about 300 multiple choice practice questions before they give you the 100 actual questions. And if you've done the 300 practice, they're pretty much the same questions with different variables and they're fairly easy to get through if you have a basic understanding of how high level works. You shouldn't be worried about the part A. For me, when I took the exam, I was using high level off and on for about two and a half years. So when it came to part A, I knew most of the answers already and um, getting through really the hardest part was just answering 300 questions before they would let me get to the part A, like actual written exam. So again, this should not scare you. If you have a basic understanding of the platform, you'll pass no problem. Now, part B is actually where most people are going to fail because it's a live action practical exam. What you do is you basically, you set up an appointment with one of the high level proctors and it's a one hour timed Zoom call in which they're gonna set you up with a dummy agency account, a blank agency account, and they're gonna give you a scenario of what a client wants you to build for them. And you're gonna have one hour to do everything that they build, including all of the KPIs and including all of the automations and notifications that the client wants to go out. Now, where I've seen people fail is because they just simply take too long. Now, if you're used to working inside of high level very slow and very methodically, kind of figuring it out as you go, you might have a hard time keeping everything within the one hour time limit. And you understand what it is, but you might not be able to do it fast enough because there are a couple of, at least when I took the exam, there was a couple of non-standard things that the client wanted. And uh, so I had to kind of go outside of my normal comfort zone to make sure that, that they got request accommodated. The other reason why people are going to fail is because they don't necessarily use a whole lot of the platform. If you go into this only having really used websites or funnels, 
and workflows, you're gonna have a hard time with the exam because this exam is gonna touch on, I think it's like five or six different features, feature sets inside of high level, but you don't know what it is until you actually get there uh, on the test in the part B. So the combination of not knowing what's going to be on it, maybe working in areas of high level that you're not necessarily familiar with, and then only having that one hour time limit to get everything right is the reason why most people are going to fail. However, I've built you a tool that is gonna generate scenarios just like these so you can get used to them before you take the exam. Let's hop into my computer, I'll go show you what I built. And this is what I've built for you. This is my high level scenario generator, custom GPT that I built for you. It's free to use, and it's actually linked down in the description of this video. Let me kind of walk you through how this works. So if you remember, high level is gonna give you a fictitious client, and they're gonna give you a fictitious client scenario for you to basically go ahead and build high level around. That's what I've built this GPT to do. All you have to do is click one of these two conversation starters. Let's say, build me a high level business scenario. If they wanna pick an industry, fine. I don't remember the industry from when I took my test, but this now is spitting out a dental clinic and it's gonna give you a business scenario. Let's give it a second uh, for this to go ahead and load, then we'll go through it. All right, so now that it's loaded, this is actually loaded probably a more complex scenario than what you're gonna encounter on the test, which is a good thing. So by the time you get to the test, it'll be a walk in the park. Basically, we have Dr. Emily Carter, who owns Carter Family Dental. She's a mid-sized clinic offering cosmetic and emergency dental services. And it's saying that she struggles with missed appointments, inefficient follow-ups, and low patient engagement. And she wants to increase the number of Google reviews to improve retention. So there we have our scenario. Let's come down here to the client requests. Now, no normal client is gonna say kind of what I wanna do in a bullet form, but they do give you this for the exam. So they're gonna say they wanna reduce no-shows by sending automated reminders, improve follow-ups, collect more Google reviews, reactivate past patients, and then streamline appointment booking. You're probably gonna get maybe two or three of these on the exam. You won't get all five of these scenarios because uh, they're not gonna have you build a whole database reactivation campaign in an hour. That would be silly. I think mine was setting up a calendar appointment reminder sequence. I can't, although I can't quite remember. Now coming down here into KPIs to track, this is not gonna be on the exam, but this is gonna help train you how to think. So when you start interacting with real clients, these are performance indicators that you can judge your work by. And then coming down here, the GPT here also spit out the recommended automations and workflows. So if you're not, if you're not familiar with high level, you're not familiar with how to do these requests, it's actually giving you the recommended workflows to go ahead and build to fulfill on this client scenario. So again, if you're still struggling with kind of, you know, this is what the customer wants, I'm not sure what to build in high level, you can use these recommendations down here as training wheels as you figure out the system and as you start to get comfortable hearing your request and then going, oh, that's what I need to go build. So again, this is recommending an appointment reminder workflow at 48, 24, and two hours before appointments. It's recommending a uh, also a text reminder there, a 24-hour thank you text after visits. Again, a patient reactivation campaign. You're probably not gonna have a whole uh, customer reactivation campaign in your one-hour test. But it's also good practice to get used to building these kinds of things because then there is going to be a real client request that goes, hey, can you build me one of these? And you'll be able to because you've been using this, uh, this practice scenario generator. Also, two-way SMS for instant communication. It's kind of built in. Sometimes chat will give me something that's natively built into high level. It's AI, it's not 100% right. But then on the bottom here, I've actually programmed it to give you the option to generate a visual diagram. So if you're really having a hard time conceptualizing how this all fits, chat sometimes can make you a really good mind map. Sometimes it's kind of crap. It's AI, it's kind of what it is. Um, but here we go, we got a simple flow chart. Let's say, let's go make me a flow chart to visualize this. Now we give it a couple seconds, it's gonna generate a flow chart. All right, so we came back about a minute later. Uh, this flow chart, again, I said sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Let's, uh, let's take a look at what we got here. Let's see, once we open it up here, it's kind of all over the place. So I would not rely on this. I've gotten some that are a nice line, uh, basically nice linear flows that are there. This one here, not, uh, I don't know what's going on in this one. So I'm gonna leave this one, I'm gonna actually leave this in the video so you can see that it's not always great. Uh, sometimes you might need to generate it, but honestly for me, I wouldn't rely on this. I would try to draw this out on a piece of paper before you start going building it inside of high level. So what I would do is I would come over to GPT, generate a scenario, then spin up a blank sub account, and then actually build this scenario inside of that blank sub account. Once you're comfortable with it, time yourself to see how long it took. And once you can do probably, again, I would say one to two of these objectives in an hour, right? If you really wanna stress and get three, and if you can get three of these in an hour, you'll be in a really good position to take the Part B exam and have a really good shot at passing in your first shot. So if you wanna pass the certified admin test on your first shot, here's what you do. Number one, you Use the free GPT that I created for you to generate a random scenario. And then number two, run one of those scenarios each day until you can solve the scenario in about an hour. 
And once you do that, you're ready to take part B and you'll be able to handle whatever they throw at you. And there's gonna be a 99% chance you're gonna pass on the first try. The more scenarios it throws at you, the more comfortable you get inside high level, the more confident you're gonna be when you take the exam and the more you're gonna feel comfortable charging as a service provider. And once you pass, you can raise your rates and become a highly paid high level service provider. Speaking of which, I've actually left a free program down in the description that'll show you everything that I've done and everything I'm doing to land $5,000 service clients with high level. And if you want to go more here on YouTube, you can actually watch one of these two videos up here in the corner. So I'll see you in one of these videos.